Hello, everyone, and welcome to the special elections edition of ASTA's Welcome Wednesday. My name is Jasmine Causey. I am the Director of Chapter Relations at ASTA. Before we get started, I'm going to ask that everyone just go ahead and put in the chat where you are listening from. I personally am listening from Suffolk, Virginia, and I'm happy to be here this afternoon. During this special edition of Welcome Wednesday, you will learn more about ASTA's elections process and hear from some of the candidates who are seeking positions on ASTA's National Board of Directors. At this time, please welcome to our stage ASTA's Senior Vice President and General Counsel, Peter Labasso. Hi, Peter. Hi, Jasmine, how are you? Thank you for that Ooh. nice introduction. Um, it's great to be here with you. This is my first uh, time uh, hosting Welcome Wednesday. And this, as Jasmine said, is a very special occasion because we have uh, the pleasure of welcoming in seven of our nine candidates for the ASTA at-large seat on the board of directors. So with that, I wanted to just kind of give a little bit of a background on the board of directors generally, the election process, eligibility, as well as setting down some of the ground rules for today's presentation. So if you could pull up that first slide for me, please, that would be terrific. Um, if you would advance, please. Uh, one, one more, please. The, the first thing I wanted to mention is that um, we are talking about the election to the board of directors, but um, as many of you know, and for some of you who, who perhaps are new to ASTA, you may not know this, but we have uh, different types of seats on the board of directors. What we're going to be talking about today is the, uh, is the election or how, how the process is, is run to fill the eight at-large seats on the board of directors. So if you could advance to the next slide for me, please. Thank you. So here's a breakdown of what the ASTA board of directors looks like currently. It's, it's the association's governing body, and it works uh, hand in hand uh, with the ASTA staff in setting the direction, the overall strategic direction for the, for the association. So the, so the work that the board of directors does is really critically important. And uh, we certainly want to encourage everyone who has the interest in serving on the board to consider doing so next year. And obviously, if, if for whatever reason you don't feel inclined to want to run for the board, it's equally important that your voice be heard and that you exercise your right to vote. So we'll be talking about that a little bit as well. But first, uh, to, to kind of give you a brief uh, overview of the composition of the board, it consists of 15 voting members. There are eight directors at large. Three of those seats are currently open, and we're going to be hearing from seven of the nine candidates who have announced their, uh, their candidacy for one of those at-large seats. We also have three regional directors. One of those seats is open this year. The regional directors are not elected by the, the, uh, the membership at large, but rather by all of the chapter presidents uh, who happen to reside in the region for whom that director is running. And uh, Jasmine uh, has a, a particular role here on the ASSA staff, and she's uh, very, uh, very well attuned to the issues regarding the, the chapter presidents and the regional directors. So she is really a great resource should you have any questions about that. But we're not going to be talking about that today. Again, our focus is going to be on the, on the at-large seats. In addition, we have two seats uh, that are held by members of the Corporate Advisory Council. Corporate Advisory Council is almost a trade association within the larger ASTA trade association, and they have two seats set aside for them. We also have a number of consortium members. Uh, one of them is selected to sit on the board and they, uh, they will serve for a two-year term, and then they'll rotate to the next consortium that qualifies under the terms of the bylaws. And finally, we have our SBN, or Small Business Director, seat on the board. Uh, for some of you longtime ASTA members, uh, we used to call this the NACTA seat, um, and it's essentially representing the interests of our small independent advisor community, which, 
as many of you know, has grown exponentially in the, in the last several years. So that makes up the 15 voting members. I should add that there is a 16th member of the board of directors, and that is our CEO, Zane Kirby. Um, he is not a, a voting member, but he is a member of the board by virtue of his status as the uh, chief executive of the association. Next slide, please. Now, I talked a minute ago about eligibility criteria. Um, and obviously, the, uh, the nomination period for 2022 has already closed. But if any of you are on the call are interested in becoming a candidate next year or in a, or in a future year, um, here you see on the screen what the eligibility criteria for the office happens to be. First, you, you must be either the official representative of a corporate member with voting privileges or an individual member with voting privileges. And you must be in good standing for two years prior to assuming office. So if you just joined ASTA in the last month or so, then you, you, you will have to wait until 2024 when that, that two year period has has elapsed. Um, other than that, though, those those are really the only criteria. So as long as you maintain your membership in good standing and you do have uh, if you are, if you are one of one of those uh, categories, then you you are eligible to uh, to put yourself in as a candidate. Um, I do want to mention, however, that there is one limitation. You can see that's that in, in that fourth bullet point below. If you happen to be an independent contractor member, you are not eligible to run for the at large seat on the board. However, uh, you still have a path to the board in that you are eligible to run for the small business network seat on the board. And um, I should also add that if you are interested in running for one of the at-large uh, seats and you, you currently are an independent contractor member, you always have the option of upgrading your membership to the core or travel agency mem membership category, which then would allow you to run for one of the at-large seats. So uh, if your, your current status is that of an IC member, um, you don't need to necessarily feel that you are permanently limited in that regard because again, you do have the right to upgrade your membership. Next slide, please. Now let's assume you get, you get elected to one of these at-large seats. W what does that mean for you as far as the term of office? Um, under the ASTA bylaws, every at-large director is elected to a two-year term. And the term begins at the conclusion of the annual fall meeting, which we have interpreted for, for many, many years as being the ASTA Global Convention. As I'm sure all of you on the call know, our ASTA Global Convention is gonna be held August 24th to 26th in San Francisco, California this year. So uh, the, the folks that you'll be hearing from today, if they're successful in, in winning one of the three open at large seats, they will officially be seated and become part of the board of directors upon the conclusion of the Global Convention. And their term will then run uh, for two years uh, until the, uh, the conclusion of the uh, global convention in, in 2024. Um, I should also add that there is a provision for re-election to the board. Indeed, three of our nine candidates are currently sitting members of the board of directors, so they are exercising their right to seek an additional two-year term. And then finally, a, uh, a rule was uh, implemented about three years ago in which uh, it was decided that uh, members of the board of directors after they've completed that second two-year term uh, are indeed eligible to return to the board one more time for up to two terms after being off the board for three years. So uh, in an ideal situation, one could run, uh, be elected to two consecutive terms, then take three years off the board and then come back for two more, at which point then uh, that's that's pretty much the end of the service that they're they're able to have under the under the current rendition of the bylaws. Next slide, please. Now, again, I said in the in the event that you, for whatever reason, are not interested in becoming a candidate in a future year yourself, uh, we still think that there is a really important role that everyone at ASTA has to play. And that is if you are eligible to vote, that we we strongly encourage you to do so. And there you see on the screen what the eligibility criteria looks like for that. Uh, you must be either a travel agency, also known as a core member, or an independent contractor member, or the official representative, or a premium manager of one of our premium 
uh, membership categories, which is just premium, host, agency, or consortium member categories. And every year we have we obviously have to set an election calendar, and uh, that's dictated, of course, by the bylaws. And this year, the the deadline, the cutoff date, if you will, is that you must be a member in good standing as of July the eighth at five o'clock. So you can uh, still join ASTA if you have not already. If you do so before July the eighth, and you're in one of those voting categories, then you do have the right to vote in this year's election. And next slide, please. And just a quick overview of what the election calendar looks like. Obviously, our nomination period has already come and gone, but here's what you, you have to look forward to after that July 8th uh, cutoff date. On July the 12th, the ballots will be sent to everyone who is eligible to vote, and you'll receive that by email. The, uh, the, the voting period lasts for two weeks. So on July the 26th, that's, that's the deadline for every member to have completed their ballot. The following day on July 27th, uh, we at ASTA headquarters will announce the results. We'll, we'll tell you who won. And then the following day, we then open the nomination period for selection of our executive committee. Um, when you're on the board of directors, uh, you do have the right to vote for the executive committee, which consists of the, the chair, the vice chair and secretary, which is one office, and then the treasurer. And in order to put yourself into contention for one of those seats, you do have to then uh, once again submit a, your a self-nomination to ASTA headquarters. And you can see there the deadline for doing that is August the 4th. And then on August 24th, we'll all be out in San Francisco. That'll be the incoming board as well as the outcoming board of directors. And uh, at that point, then the executive committee for 2022-23 will be voted upon by the board of directors. So that's kind of a snapshot of what we have to look forward to in the next, uh, in the next six weeks or so. Um, and with that, if you could go on to the next slide, please. Now that we've kind of got a good background, let me just give you a really brief overview of what we're going to be doing here today as far as getting the candidates up here to speak to you. Uh, first, as I mentioned, we do have nine at-large candidates uh, in this election cycle. Everyone uh, was invited to participate. Uh, the speaking order was selected at random uh, because we didn't want there to be any type of uh, perception of any, of any advantage going to someone perhaps who, who's speaking later after they've heard what other candidates had to say. So obviously we take, we take fairness of the process very, very seriously and we did choose the, the speaking order at random. Um, I'm gonna make a very, very brief introduction of each candidate and then I'm gonna turn it over to them. They'll have five minutes to speak. I'm not going to ask any particular questions. I'm gonna let them say whatever's on their mind, what, what their vision for ASTA is, why they were motivated to run for the board, and what, what, they, uh, what they would hope to achieve should they be elected uh, to the board. Um, Jasmine's going to uh, watch our countdown clock very carefully. Everyone will have exactly five minutes in order to help you uh, determine when you need to wrap things up. Uh, there will be a countdown clock that will appear on the screen when there are 30 seconds left. At the end of the 30 seconds, I'm going to come back up and thank our candidate for participating. And then we're going to move without any delay on to the next candidate. Um, I did want to note again, because I did mention that we have nine candidates for the at-large seats this year. Only seven are going to be appearing here today. So the others who were unable to attend uh, for this live presentation, they will have an opportunity to record a statement, which we'll then post on asta.org so that you will have an opportunity to hear what they have to say as well. So with that, uh, why don't we get started? And uh, if we could, can we please bring up our first candidate? Hello, Jen. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Peter. I hope you guys can hear me OK. I'm so sorry uh, for the uh, noise in the background. I'm at San Jose Airport getting ready to board a plane. Welcome. Uh, for those of you who don't know Jen Lee, uh, she is the Vice President of Industry Engagement and Support with Travel Planner, Planners International in Maitland, Florida. Jen, yes. welcome. We want Thank to hear you. from you now. Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for taking um, some time out to really get to know all of the candidates that are running for the director at large position with ASTA. Uh, just a brief introduction of me and why I'm so passionate about running for the board. Um, I have been in the industry for just a little over six years, came from a small business consulting background where I worked with entrepreneurs just like you in helping them launch and grow their businesses. I have been passionate for the entrepreneurial space for so long. I closed my consulting practice down when I came into the industry with TPI because I saw the great opportunity that we have and also the big missed opportunity that we may have if we don't continue to get it right. And what I mean by that is there are a group of advisors and agency owners that have uh, been around for 30, 40 years, you know who you are, that have built this amazing industry. Then there's a section that are coming into the industry in the last five to 10 years. And then there's a big gap. And I'm nervous that during that gap, we're not going to be attracting smart small business owners uh, to fill the back out, the backfill. Consumers are relying on advisors more and more every single day, uh, but we cannot rest until we no longer hear, huh? From the question, um, yes, I used a travel advisor to book my uh, cruise, to plan my family vacation. That's still a very real answer out there. And um, I want to work with ASTA to ensure that we are educating the consumers at every turn, every possible opportunity on the travel advisor community, the importance that the advisors and agency owners out there play in their everyday lives, not just the life of the vacation, but the kickstarting a marriage, uh, you know, a 50 year marriage through use of a travel advisor for their honeymoon, uh, helping families uh, reconnect. Sorry for all that noise, guys. Um, doing all of that stuff. So number one, I want to make sure uh, that we do not rest until we uh, never have that look of travel advisors still exist. Number two, uh, I have a very strong media background as well as a political background. And the day I joined this industry, the very first event I went to was the ASTA global convention that was being held in Reno, Nevada. And I remember meeting ASTA members and um, the folks that are running ASTA. And I thought to myself, my goodness, here is an association here that they need help in understanding, not understanding, but actually implementing all the great ideas that they have. And so if I can uh, lend um, my expertise to help design programs, to help make really good decisions on where marketing money goes, advertising budgets go, open doors, I'll get more and more of you guys to participate in ASTA Legislative Day, then I know I will uh, have made an impact with ASTA. You know, ASTA is not doing anything wrong. That's the great news. There's nothing to fix at ASTA. But I think it is time that we start taking a look at these board of directors positions and say, we need some fresh blood. I hate that word, but do you know what I mean? We need some people that haven't sat on the board so that they can dive in and see where else uh, we can be benefiting and helping ASTA make those good decisions. Um, ASTA is just getting stronger and stronger by the day. Our industry is getting stronger and stronger by the day. If you follow me at all, you know I am constantly speaking out not just for the advisor, but for that agency owner, for our industry. As a matter of fact, TPI created an entire position for me, took me out of the VP of sales and marketing role and put me into a VP of industry engagement and support because they know and see and can honor the, the passion that I have behind each and every one of you, no matter where you are in your advisor or agency uh, path. And so industry engagement and support, that's my job is to find better, find ways, more ways, elevate the industry, elevate obviously Travel Planners International as well, but we know that if we elevate the industry, everyone is gonna benefit from it. So guys, I don't have much more to have to say. I know my five minutes is not even up, um, but put me in coach, uh, give me the opportunity to bring that fresh perspective, uh, that passion, that work seven days a week, coming to you from the stairs outside of San Jose Airport, because that's what you have to do to take care of your clients. Uh, give me a chance, guys. Give me a chance, and I know you won't be disappointed. Peter, I'll give the rest of my time to the next candidate or to, the, to everybody else. That's great, Jen. Hey, thank you so much for making making the time to do this today. I know the location was a little bit of a challenge for you, but we're really, really grateful to have you speak with us today. Thank, thank you, guys. I, I got to go board a plane. Bye. Bye.
Okay, next up here is Jackie Friedman. Jackie is the president of Nexion Travel Group in Irving, Texas. Welcome, Jackie. Hey, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. So first of all, I really, really appreciate uh, the opportunity. I too uh, am in the San Jose area, but I haven't checked out of my hotel yet. Uh, just a brief bit about me. Uh, for those that don't know me, I am the president of Nexion Travel Group. I've been in uh, with Nexion since 2004, been in the industry for 37 years and uh, involved with ASTA for 22 years. And uh, it's a passion of mine, particularly uh, to see uh, all, um, all areas of ASTA grow over the time. I sat initially on the ASTA Board of Directors from 2012 to 2016. I did take that three-year hiatus that Peter talked about. And during that time, I was part of a team that helped start the DFW chapter. It was a new chapter. Uh, we won uh, Chapter of the Year uh, on the RISE Award in 2017. Uh, and uh, it gave me great insight as to the importance and strength of the chapter system. I'm a big believer in it. I had the opportunity to rerun for the board of directors in 2019. Uh, and at that time, I also became part of the executive committee, uh, spent two years as treasurer and am currently the uh, vice chair and uh, secretary. So been involved in all aspects of ASTA, been on committees, uh, the Independent Contractor Committee, the Education Committee. Uh, and I do it because I have a passion for the industry. I have a passion for the people that work in this industry uh, and for the success of travel advisors. So I look at uh, where I can make contributions in really two ways. The first is growth. We continue to educate and speak to advisors uh, coming into the industry very early on about the importance of supporting ASTA. Make them educated uh, and get them involved uh, and understanding the importance of what ASTA does and why it's important for them to support the trade association. And we've had some great success there. Uh, during my first term on the board, I was part of a team where we were very um, instrumental in the creation of the independent contractor category. Uh, and right now it is one of the, if not the fastest growing membership category of ASTA. Uh, and uh, that's something I'm certainly very proud of. But it's more than just growth. We can have a lot of members, but we really need those members to be engaged. And engaged means that you attend the training events, come to global convention, and get involved in the chapter system. There is no better way of building that local community uh, and the chapters are doing some amazing things. And so I certainly hope all of you uh, that have joined ASTA and are part of ASTA are taking advantage uh, of the chapter system uh, because it takes, again, uh, membership. You know, Mark Casto, who you'll hear from in a little bit, um, set a goal for the board of directors, uh, you know, 25, um, sorry, 20,000 members by 2025. And right now we're at about 17,000. So we're well on our way, but we need uh, all of you that are part of that 17,000 to keep being part of the uh, solution, to tell your friends, to spread the word so that we can continue to grow and really have a body that represents uh, our industry. I also love seeing more and more of you getting involved and engaged uh, in advocacy. You know, some of the grassroots campaigns that we've had recently, uh, we've really uh, promoted that and had so many voices heard, which is really so important. Uh, so that's uh, really been key, getting more and more folks engaged with Legislative Day. These are all things uh, that I really try and do. You know, in my day job uh, at Nexion, I find opportunities throughout the year to keep telling the ASTA story. And since I've been on the board of directors, I find other ways, uh, columns in some of the trade papers. Uh, and uh, I have one coming up uh, soon where, again, just continuing to tell uh, the ASTA story because it's going to take all of us 
to do what Jen just talked about, which is to stop that question of what you guys still exist. So going back to the core as to belief, <coughs> excuse me, uh, both, um, you know, advocating as well as consumer awareness, those two things uh, are critically important as we grow the industry. So I am now down to 21 seconds, 20 seconds. Uh, so I ask you all for your support uh, in my re-election and I certainly wish my fellow candidates the best of luck. Back to you, Peter. Jackie, thank you so much for that. And again, for making yourself available to talk to our membership today. Good luck. Thanks. Next up, we have Dr. Jasmine Lewis, and she is the Chief Executive Officer of Travel Life Services in Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome, Jasmine. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Hello, I am so excited to be here. Hi, everyone. Hope you're having a great day. Again, my name is Dr. Jasmine Lewis, and I hope to share a little bit about myself, my background, and what I hope to accomplish. So I am the CEO of Travel Life Services, a full-service travel agency located in Cleveland, Ohio. I am passionate about travel as a lifestyle, so I started my own company to bring the travel experience to a wide range of people. And I've been in the industry over eight years with more than 12 years of experience. I have a doctorate in organizational leadership, and I also operate a coaching business to help aspiring entrepreneurs and fellow newbies to the travel industry as well. As a formal educator of nine years, sharing knowledge has always been an important part of my life. I've dedicated countless hours to improving my community through education and through efforts. Currently, I sit on a board for a not-for-profit organization called Come Full Circle, a group dedicated to supporting men through reentry. And I also, over the years, have volunteered with at-risk youth reentry programs um, with those participants, group home residents, and many others. In 2021, I've also participated in many charitable fundraising activities and events with organizations such as Books for Bruises and Builders Rebuilding Families. I have been a member of ASSA since 2018, attending such events like global conventions, legislative day, um, and things of that sort. I am a member of ASTA's Young Professional Society as well. And to keep on track with that mission to share knowledge, I've also provided several interviews um, for the ASTA Travel Advisor Magazine multiple times, and you guys may have seen me in that one before. I've also seen ASTA grow and sustain through these challenging years, as many of the other participants have mentioned um, as well. And as a member of the board of directors, I will hope to only help ASTA to provide more support to the travel industry and its members by focusing on partnerships for technology, sustainable travel agencies, and updating educational training programs. Expanding access to technology will expand our reach as an organization and will allow for better communication on the national level. With the travel industry changing so rapidly in the wake of COVID, the VTA or VITA program training program needs to be fully updated and innovatively accommodate new developments. I can increase membership through my focus on diversity, equality, and inclusion while implementing more actionable programs within the organization. Under my leadership, ASTA will harness the power of the Young Professional Society to host networking events outside of the educational travel and global events. This will breathe new life into our memberships. I have skillfully balanced organizational objectives and productive relationships, strategizing and recommending ways in which to achieve and maintain competitive business edge. I possess expertise in organizational leadership and also to maximize performance and inspiring colleagues. I'm able to visualize success. I also can identify unconventional yet highly effective ways and strategies for achieving that success. I believe that my professional background and my industrialist drive makes me an ideal candidate to fill this position. I look forward to serving our membership on the board of directors and continuing as this member, a membership mission and mission for the travel industry. Thank you so much. I hope everyone votes and have a great, a great, great, great rest of your day.
and I yield the rest of my time since I did not use it all to the next member. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. That was really, really helpful. And we do appreciate you making yourself available to join us today. Next up, we have Mark Casto. He is the president of Leisure Americas for Flight Center Travel Group. And he is in Boston, although I think he's coming uh, from a remote location. Uh, welcome, Mark. Hello. I am not Mark, but I believe that Mark is having some technical difficulties. So we're going to move on to our next available candidate. Um, before we do, I would just like to emphasize as we are listening to these candidates, the importance of you, the members listening right now to take advantage of voting. This is your power. This is your association. Oh, it looks like Mark is actually rejoined us. So we're going to go ahead and invite up Mark. Thank you so much for waiting. Thank you very much, Osmond. Hi, Mark. Are Thank you, you Peter. Able, are you able to proceed? I believe I am able to proceed. Um, I did just pop off. Uh, as may have been mentioned, I am sitting through the edge of a tropical storm ready to turn to hurricane. Uh, it's a vacation that I've been long waiting to join. So, Well, we can hear you just fine and see you just fine. So if you'd like okay. to proceed, please, please go ahead. Let's go forward then. So as I mentioned, I, I am on vacation. So you're calling me uh, from that. I pre-COVID had a life goal of training my children how to become scuba divers. It's a long standing passion of mine as well as my family before it. And of course, COVID interrupted some of those travel habits that we all have. Now that things have started to reemerge, that for me was one of the first things we wanted to do. Of course, we picked a destination that is being besought by rain at this present moment. But that is just one of the challenges that we all work through. It's also one of the joys of travel is the unexpected, it's the uh, unanticipated, and we all find a way to make it happen. So if there is another power outage that knocks me out, so be it, that's the way it is, we roll with it. As all of us have learned to do with an asset, as all of us have learned to do within travel. I am presently the chair of the board of directors for ASTA. I'm a multi-year person on the board as well, too. I, it first started back in 2007 because I understood then the role of advocacy, the role of community, and the role that we all had to participate together to influence and input upon the, the force of that play into our travel space, that none of us really can do a lot of these efforts on our own individually, and we really have to rely upon the power of the network. That brought me into ASTA. What brought me into travel was joining my own travel company uh, back in 2000 and working with the family that we had to, to start a company. I sold my firm in 2019 to Flight Center, but continued my love of, of ASTA and joined back onto the board at the organization at that point. Now, as chair of the board, I had set out three primary initiatives for us to focus upon. I believe fundamentally that the power of our membership needs to show that we have continued increase in our membership as well too. For us to be relevant within the advocacy format, we need to grow our membership. When we when I started as chair, we were about 13,000 members. So I launched program 20 by 25, as Jackie alluded to earlier, which is to get us to 20,000 members by the year 2025. Thankfully, the response from the community, the response from our suppliers as well too, has been extraordinary. And we're now uh, over 17,000, well on our way to 18,000 members in this year alone. So we're likely going to be exceeding that. The second initiative is that all of us have recognized over the course of COVID that we can't be focus upon just our region. While the regional identity is critical and our chapters are the best avenue to be able to do it, we also need to add to the mix our international focus as well too. The international programs that we have are great, but we need to work harder and stronger with our partners in Europe with ECTA, in Canada with ACTA, within the Caribbean with the Hotel Trade Association and other areas because what is the events that take place in Brussels, what takes place in London, what takes place in, in Calgary, in Toronto, in Washington DC, all impact our business. And we need to have strong ties in those relations. And I'm ecstatic that we have been able to expand upon our relationships with ACTA, with ACTA and other entities as well too, to ha harness the power of ASTA and extend the reach of it as well. And the third is I fundamentally in my core believe in sustainability as a function for what we need to do to set the way forward. I believe fundamentally that we need to create the path of, of for ourselves and for the industry as well too, which is why I launched Project uh, Net Zero by 2030. 
that we as an industry need to come to the claim and come to the table and say, we will be net zero by 2030. Thankfully, ASA has completely supported those initiatives. And since I've been chair, we have gone completely carbon neutral in all of our meetings, every single one of our meetings. We've also laid out extraordinary education tracks for each of the members to understand what it means for themselves, what it means for their companies, and to lay out a pathwork onto how to work towards that end. To also how to better communicate it with the next generation of leaders that we have within our business who have stated that this is the number one top priority that we need to set and solve for. And fundamentally, for us to be able to educate the rest of the industry, to recognize suppliers when they do the right thing, to reward those who are actually putting forward honest and valuable sentiment and statements to achieve towards those ends. So between our membership growth, our international growth, as well as our commitment to sustainability, I believe we're on the track record. And that's where I really want to continue the focus upon for ASTA is those three areas. Likewise, as we have seen significant growth with our membership base, we need to re-engage further for the chapters themselves to ensure that they themselves are best able to, to anchor that core, the spirit, the network that is ASTA, so many of us come to the table for many different reasons, but one of the most powerful is the ability to educate each other, the ability to share, and that happens best at the chapter network. So I strongly encourage each of you who have not been engaged to be engaged with your chapters. Likewise, please vote for membership of the board. I'm honored to be running against so many incredible people who have done so much for the brand. And finally, please participate in your legislative day and activities. There's so much more that we need to communicate to our legislators about what we do, what we can do, and what we will do. Thank you. Mark, thank you so much for taking time out to join us today and be safe. Will do. Take care, Peter. Our next candidate is Tiffany Hines. She is the president and CEO of Global Escapes Incorporated in Athens, Georgia. Tiffany, welcome. Thank you, Peter. And yes, Mark, I hope you have a wonderful vacation. Go teach those kids how to scuba dive. Hello, fellow ASTA members. Um, we appreciate you guys joining us today and giving us an opportunity to talk to you about who we are and why we would love to see you uh, vote for us for the national director at large position. Um, I enjoyed seeing so many of you in DC last week. So um, I would appreciate your consideration for a second term, having just completed my first term through this extremely unique time in our industry. I've had a front row seat to how ASTA represents its membership in Washington and beyond. With your help, I look forward to continuing to serve the members and hit those goals that Mark spoke about. Although the surge in travel is a blessing, there is now a shortage of travel advisors, and this has many members feeling overwhelmed as they're working longer hours trying to please clients. I understand this all too well. The current environment is very challenging, and we as an industry have an opportunity. With the great resignation taking place, people are leaving other careers that offer no purpose or meaning in their lives. What we do is rewarding. We help people realize their travel dreams and at the same time, create amazing lifestyles for ourselves. Jasmine, Alvin, and Summer know all too well the exciting opportunities for the young professionals joining our industry. And I am so impressed with the ideas that they have for growing this audience. As a second generation travel advisor, I've been in the industry my entire career. Since 1988, I've had the opportunity to not only grow as a travel advisor, but as a leader and now CEO of our organization. A strong work ethic, an empowered team, and a passion for travel have helped us to continue to grow through all of these challenges of running a leisure and corporate travel business. In addition to being a national director at large for ASTA, I was honored with the Small Business Association's Women in Business Champion Award for the state of Georgia and the Junior League of Athens Angel Award. These awards are a testament to our teamwork and our company culture. If reelected, I will continue to support ASTA's membership and mission. I believe there are multiple areas we can continue to focus on. Number one, industry career awareness. We need to educate people 
of the benefits of choosing travel advisor as a career path, thus increasing our ranks. Number two, we need to continue training. As we grow our industry, we should be recognized as a service as worthy as legal or medical advice. Not only should we be charging fees for our services, but we should also be working with suppliers on how we get paid. We should never be left unpaid for the valuable work we do on behalf of our supplier partners, like happened for so many during the pandemic. And number three, political communication. The advocacy, the, the work that we did in Washington, D.C. last week was so incredibly important. We should continue to educate legislators in Washington on how the travel industry works to make sure we have protection from misguided legislation. Of course, this means we must continue to grow the ASTA membership, as Mark mentioned, because we have seen firsthand over the last two years how powerful we can be together. I believe that a rising tide lifts all the boats. We are stronger together. There's never been a better time for us to have this collaborative environment in our industry as we all work together to rebuild. As frustrating as the last couple of years have been, I remain extremely optimistic about the opportunities that lie ahead. As a small business owner, I would be honored to continue a second term as representative on the board for the smaller agencies. All sectors need to be represented. I thank you for your support in this last term and would greatly appreciate your vote again. Thank you for your consideration. Tiffany, thank you so much for joining us today and good luck. Thank you. Our final speaker today is James Ferrara. He is the co-founder and president of IntelliTravel and he is based in Norwood, New Jersey. Welcome, James. Thank you, Peter, and uh, good afternoon, Asta. Uh, I'd be honored to serve as a national director at Asta representing you. Uh, I believe my service would be a natural extension of my 32-year uh, travel career, which has been wholly dedicated to supporting and nurturing travel advisors. I've never done anything else in the travel industry. Um, as the leader of what many of you, uh, many view as the largest and oldest host agency, a very successful company with nearly half a billion dollars in travel sales and market leading profitability and growth, even during the pandemic, I have developed skills and achievements which landed us just this week on the top 25 uh, travel retailers power list from Travel Weekly. Um, but more importantly, those same skills would bring great value to our collective work at ASTA, I believe. I also continue to sell travel personally, uh, connecting one-on-one -on -one with my customers so I understand the forces of our industry from both perspectives. Frankly, all the candidates would make great directors. I know most of them and I respect all of them. I'd like you to think of me perhaps as a new and fresh presence and perspective on the board. As you would expect, my strengths and uh, our, our partner relations supplier negotiations, uh, travel legal matters, technology, uh, innovative agent education, large scale event production, and careful business administration. You may not know, however, that I also have a media presence. Uh, as a trusted source and advocate for our industry, for cruising and for travel advisors in particular, I've appeared in regular national uh, television interviews on Fox and Fox Business, CNBC, MSNBC, so on. And in publications such as the New York Times, uh, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Condé Nast, Travel and Leisure, many others. The point is I have a voice 
And I have used it purposely to elevate the value of travel advisors and the importance of travel. I intend to keep doing that whether I'm a director of ASTA or not. In addition to currently serving on the ASTA IC Advisory Board and the Governance Committee, I'm a longtime member of the Starboard Advisory Board of CLIA, where I push to have CLIA develop a stronger media voice during the pandemic, as well as a member of advisory boards for American Airlines Vacations, Delta Vacations, Apple Leisure Group Vacations, Travel Market Report, and several others. Another thing you may not know, my company has introduced more new advisors to our industry than any other, including a large community of millennial and Gen Z agents, new blood, which benefits all of us. So I'm naturally passionate about certain challenges we all face as advisors, as agency managers, and as owners like when commissions are paid, uh, the fairness of supplier practices that can sometimes leave us with undue liability, and state and federal legislation affecting our livelihoods. I plan to help ASTA become more of a resource for us to share best practices and solutions to real problems that cost us real money, like stubborn commission recovery, and fraud protection strategies. If you will give me the chance, I intend to bring a fresh approach and all my powers to things that matter to us all as your national director of ASTA. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, James. We really appreciate you making the time and good luck. Now, for those of you who have been watching carefully, uh, you know that we said earlier that we were going to have seven candidates joining us today. Um, unfortunately, we had one last minute cancellation. I do wanna re repeat again, however, that for those candidates who were not able to make it today, we will be providing them with an opportunity to provide us with a recording uh, with their position statement, and we will promptly post that online so that all of you can hear from all nine of the at-large candidates. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention here today, and I will turn it back over to Jasmine. Oh, hello. Hi, everyone. Oh, it's great. there you go. <laughs> hello, everyone, and welcome back. Like Peter said, we do have additional candidates that we would like you to consider as well as the candidates we have here. I would like to thank all of the candidates today. And before we depart, I would like to remind you all of some very important dates. First, if you are not an ASTA member or your ASTA membership is due to expire, make sure that you are an ASTA member in good standing by July 8th at 5 p.m. At that point, we will be pulling our list of voting members, so make sure you ensure your eligibility. If you have questions about that, please email us at askasta at asta.org, or you can also call us at 1-800-ASK-ASTA. The ballots for voting will go out on July 12th, and they are due two weeks later on July the 26th. And the following day on July the 27th, we will announce the winners of our elections. I would like to thank all of the candidates for their time today. I would also like to thank Peter Labasso, our general counsel and senior vice president, as well as Pamela Bonin, our director of strategic partnerships. And last but certainly not least, our creative director, Michelle Mueller, who has been making sure that all of this has been running in the background. We thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope to see you on a future Welcome Wednesday. I hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful afternoon. Goodbye. <laughs>